and give her a job at the White House. I guess it just didn't work out. Good work by General Kelly for quickly firing that dog. Omarosa now claiming to MSNBC that she's been interviewed by special counsel Robert Mueller's office. Have you been interviewed by the special counsel? I have. And that was Tara Palmieri reporting. Joining us now is Jeannie Zeno, professor of political science at Iona College, and Kenneth Del Vecchio, Republican strategist. Jeannie, is it racist for Donald Trump to refer to Omarosa as a dog when the president has used that phrase to describe men, white men, white women, members of the media? It seems like dog is his favorite expression. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know if, if it's racist or not, but it's certainly unfortunate for the president of the United States to be calling anybody a dog. And so, you know, from that perspective, it, it's really a sad moment. Um, you know, this is something that we've come to expect from this president, unfortunately. And that, you know, I think is for all of us as Americans, it, you know, it really is undignified when you think about this coming from the president of the United States to refer to anybody, whether he's upset with Amorosa for what she's said and done or not, you know, he should rise above this and show leadership and that's what I think is you know most unfortunate. Ken in addition to calling her a dog is referred to her as a low life a whack job but why does the president bother getting in this mud slinging? I'm not troubled by him calling her a dog or any of these names because he uses all kinds of colorful language to describe everyone as you stated. You know what this is? This is a big distraction, a distraction from Donald Trump's successes as president of the United States in denuclearizing North Korea, <laughs> I, ending the Iran nuclear deal, lower unemployment. But isn't he the one who's doing the distraction? He's the one who's tweeting this stuff out and adding fuel to the no, fire, right? No, this is standard Donald Trump uh, playbook, which comes out of my first novel from 1994 I wrote, <laughs> where don't confront me and I won't confront anybody else, but I'll get back 100 times over. And he is, all he's doing is responding, and he's responding appropriately. But and who he uses put tough words Rosa, too bad. Who put a reality TV star in the White House for $180,000? He created Omarosa. He brought her into the White House. He's the one who creates so this what? swamp. So what? And then... As David mentions, he's the one who keeps tweeting about it. Jeannie, he's hold responsible on, for hold that. On a second. Jeannie, Nobody Jeannie, else. Jeannie, Any distractions what? coming out of the White House are coming from Donald Trump. Absolutely if not. If he would he's, focus on he's policy, just, he's just he would responding. all be happy. He's just responding. And what is the relevance of her being a reality star? She's an intelligent woman who also has a great professional career in her own right. She was and fired and, three times from The Apprentice. Three yeah, times. Yeah, but so was everybody else. And the people that were fired <laughs> were all superstars what like her. What happened to the president's promise that he was going to hire the very best people. So you're he telling me the very the best. best. Just because he ends up firing well, do her doesn't mean that. Do you consider Omarosa the very best we could get in the White House? What was she doing there? She was the head of racial race relations. And, and you and think division. out of all the experts who are working very diligently well, and seriously on the issue I of race, this, Omarosa I, was the best he could I think, do. I think this. There I know are, the answer I to that. I think this. There are numerous <laughs> people. You didn't answer there me. are numerous people that could fill any given position with equal talent, skills, abilities, he and experience. Let me finish. Get the best. Let me finish. Let me finish. Omarosa and in his purview, best. she's the best. When you take an, when you take the head of an administration, you put people in who you know well, who you believe in, and who you think are superstars and studs and for those positions. So, Jeannie, what about the argument that Donald Trump is simply look? He, he, he's trying to change the focus of the story. Instead of it being about Omarosa's book, make it about her character and. And this is something Donald Trump has been very successful at doing in politics, and that is changing the focus to try to put it on better terms for him. Yeah, I, I'm sure that's what he's doing, but that's not what he should be doing. He is president of the United States. To your point, he should be focusing on the very serious issues confronting the United States. No, it's the absolute I first, don't happen Jeannie. to it's agree with her. With it's people, wait, wait, no, let no, me no, finish. No, 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 no. I Jeannie, don't have Jeannie, to, 15 seconds I don't to finish, happen and then we'll let you respond. agree with leaving the White House and writing a book. I didn't like when George Stephanopoulos did it. I don't like it now. But by the same token, the president should not take to Twitter day and night going after after people calling them dogs and lowlifes. He should focus on the issues at hand. And he brought her in, he creates this swamp, and, and then he gets like, down it. It does seem like he's the one who's punching down here. No, this is what's happening. Somebody gets attacked, and then they defend themselves. That's what Donald Trump is doing here. He has every appropriate and rightful basis to do that. And just because things went sour between them doesn't mean she wasn't a good pick in the first place. Just like the many people that got fired in Barack Obama's administration and George Bush's administration, 
administration and every other administration. That doesn't make her a bad choice. What happened now makes her a lowlife because she's making unverified false statements that everybody is coming out of the woodwork saying they're false. Frank Lund said the statement was false, that he heard her but Trump say the N-word. Michael Cohen said that it was false, that he ripped up a piece of paper that was a note and ate it. These are ridiculous think, allegations that are say, unverified. I, I think the difference between our opinions is that I don't think I want my president being a street fighter. I don't want my president getting down and dirty like you seem to want to. I want him to be dignified. I want him to handle and I want him to lead. That's your you, definition have, of dignified. Have, it also does seem, like, it does seem like the Donald Trump voters, the one thing they seem to really like about him is they like his authenticity. Even if they wish he didn't tweet, even if they wish he didn't involve, get, get involved in the mudslinging, this is who Donald Trump is. It feels like they, they know him when he says And this I'm kind one of, of those stuff. people. I love the fact that this guy is rolling up his sleeves and he's ready to throw punches, whether it's people who attack him or, 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 or who attack Ken, the United are you States proud of America. these tweets? I love You're the proud tweets. Of these tweets. They excite me. And, and this I think they're beautiful. I think they're wonderful. And I think <laughs> the beautiful people on this show, Jeannie Zano and Kendall Vecchio, I'm proud of both of you. Thanks for coming in and engaging this unbelievable debate. Coming up on Stateside, August the 13th. Well, it's a very special day for one California family. Four generations, this is a weird one. Four generations from one family all share the same birthday of August the 13th. That means they were all conceived around the same, well, that's a whole other story. And this neighborhood was not too hoppy to see a stampede of kangaroos running down the street. Hoppy, get it? Oh yeah, Cirque du So Strange is coming up. <laughs> politics.